I hate this. GarageBand for iOS is one of the most accessible and surprisingly powerful mobile DAWs out there. But for all its strengths, there's one feature baked into the app that continues to trip up and infuriate even experienced users. And you can't even turn it off. I am, of course, talking about GarageBand's automatic normalization on export. Normalization is a process that raises or lowers the overall volume of a track so that the loudest peak hits a target level, usually 0 dB. It doesn't apply dynamic processing like compression or limiting, but it does change the final loudness of your exported file. And on paper, that might actually sound like a good thing. But in reality, automatic normalization can cause more harm than good, especially if you're planning to master your tracks after you export them, or if you're aiming for consistent loudness levels across an album or an EP. Unlike Logic Pro for iPads, or even GarageBand for Mac, GarageBand for iOS gives you no option to turn off automatic normalization when exporting. It's applied automatically to every exported project or track, whether you want it to or not. If you're planning to export your mix from GarageBand for iOS and then master it in another app, or send it to a mastering engineer even, automatic normalization can ruin your workflow completely you'll be working with a file that's already been gain adjusted, which can lead to things like inaccurate loudness readings in mastering software, unwanted changes to your mix's dynamics, headroom issues if you need to add limiting or EQ boosts, and it can make it difficult to hit specific luffs targets for streaming platforms. Automatic normalization just makes mastering your exported song really, really difficult. GarageBand's auto-normalization can actually mask clipping in a mix too. If your master track is peaking and distorting, the exported file may be normalized down to 0 dB, making it sound cleaner than it actually is. Again, this can cause loads of problems when you come to master your track after exporting. So while you can't fully disable auto-normalization in GarageBand for iOS, there are a few workarounds you can do to mitigate its impact. If you have access to GarageBand on Mac, open your iOS project there and export from the Mac version. GarageBand for Mac actually lets you disable auto-normalization from its settings. It's just one simple checkbox. I have no idea why this isn't in the iOS version, but there you go. Doing this gives you full control over output gain and is the best option if you plan to master your track later. You can try and add in some extra headroom to your mix by making sure your master output gain is set a bit lower than you would usually have it, so to something like minus 6 dB. This helps reduce the amount of gain normalization applies during the export and will give you more room to work with during mastering. Another fairly well-known workaround that is worth trying if you're having issues with this is to have one track with a very loud sound before the rest of the song. This will act as a kind of volume peak, so when auto-normalization kicks in, it will base its normalized volume on that peak sound. Once you export this, you can then delete this peak sound from the start of the track, and what's left should be pretty much unaffected, and you'll be able to master it as normal. Until Apple adds a toggle to GarageBand for iOS to disable automatic normalization, and I'm not holding my breath at this point, it's important to be aware of how this invisible process affects your final mix, and to plan your workflow accordingly. Of course, you can't avoid all of these normalization headaches by upgrading your DAW. To find out if it just might be time to make the switch to Logic Pro for iPad, watch this video next.